Introduced for the 1966 model year, the Oldsmobile Tornado certainly made a splash with buyers as the vehicle looked like no other car before and certainly introduced a lot of novel technology to consumers. And chief among the new technologies that the Tornado introduced to the buying public was front-wheel drive in a longitudinally mounted engine and transmission package. This admittedly was not the first front-wheel drive vehicle as it had been introduced and popularized by a number of companies before Oldsmobile introduced the Tornado, including firms like Cord. However, the Tornado did reintroduce front-wheel drive at a time that it had really gone extinct in the U.S., and it gave the Tornado a reputation for high technology that further spilled on into Oldsmobile and its overall brand. Oldsmobile had been known for its innovative technologies, including the Rocket V8 engine, but the front-wheel drive technology that was introduced in the 66 Tornado took Ohl's tech to a new level. And while the Tornado certainly had many innovative features when it came to the powertrain, the suspension system was also quite novel for General Motors. Take a look at the front suspension setup here where you can see torsion bars are used. There actually were two of them, one on either side of the Tornado, and this served in effect as the coil spring, as you can see it being attached there to the lower control arm. A torsion bar basically resists motion in twisting, and torsion bars have been used by other companies prior to General Motors adopting the technology for Oldsmobile, including Chrysler when it introduced torsion bars in 1957 in its so-called torsion air ride. But this was the first application for General Motors to be employing these, particularly on a vehicle that was the size of the Tornado. And the Tornado needed to use these torsion bars principally because the axle shafts had to go from the final drive out to the front wheels. And if you tried to execute that strategy with a coil spring in between the upper and lower control arms, it just wouldn't work. There wouldn't be enough space. The 66 Tornado introduced torsion bars in the front suspension setup to General Motors, and it would be used on a number of vehicles as the years would continue, including the Eldorado beginning in 1967. Then for 1979, the Riviera would move to front-wheel drive and also employ the torsion bar setup up front. But torsion bars were also used on some GM trucks, like Silverados and the four-wheel drive versions, and they worked just fine and quite well. Now also notice in this picture that there is a single shock absorber between the upper and lower control arm in the picture. This would be pretty standard fare. Of course, the shock would generally be inside of the coil spring on many vehicles. But since there's no coil spring here and just torsion bars, that doesn't apply. But having two shocks up front really is not all that novel. However, the rear suspension on the Tornado, and consequently the 1967-70 to 70 Eldorado as well, was novel and let's just say, well, interesting and maybe a bit suboptimal. But let's take a look at it here. Notice that there are many differences with respect to this particular rear suspension setup versus the full-size Oldsmobile. Most notably is that there is a single-leaf rear spring as opposed to coil springs like the full-size Oldsmobile is used. And you can see that on either side of this axle. This was the first time that General Motors ever used this mono-leaf spring in the rear suspension setup like this. And it really was a pretty suboptimal setup. You can also notice in this picture that the frame for the Tornado, or I guess the subframe, terminates at the beginning leaf shackle there. There is no frame in the back of the Tornado that extends to the rear of the trunk, for example, and supports the bumper. The consequence of this engineering decision was a rather boomy ride and also one that wasn't as well controlled as the cars with coil springs in the back, certainly not as luxurious of a ride. But unfortunately, that was what these vehicles had to make do with from the 1966 model year to 1970 for the Tornado and 1967 to 1970 for the Eldorado. When the vehicles would be reintroduced and redesigned for the 1971 model year, they would go to full four coil springs. But take a look more closely at this picture of the rear suspension and you'll notice something even more interesting than that model leaf rear spring. And that is 
two shock absorbers on either side of the rear suspension. Notice that first shock absorber really deals with the up and down motion, and that would have been pretty typical. Four rear suspensions of this era, and just in general. But take a look at this other shock absorber here. This one was designed to control front to back motion and help locate the axle so that it wasn't bobbing all around when it hit a bump and jouncing. And it was certainly helpful. My guess is that Oldsmobile engineers were trying to use this second and very atypical shock absorber in the rear suspension to help with overall stability and also with ride control and maybe even things like impact harshness as well as the interior noises coming from the rear suspension, as presumably that could at least help cushion some of the blows that the rear suspension was taking in that front-to-back axis. To my knowledge, no other General Motors passenger car has employed this total of four shocks at the rear to help control this rear suspension setup. But that's what it was employed on the 66 to 70 Tornado and 67 to 70 Eldorado. Now, recall that's four shocks in the rear and two shocks for the front suspension, making a total of six. But I will tell you that the Tornado actually has seven shocks on the car overall. So where is the last shock to make total seven? Well, it's up front and part of the overall steering setup. You can see it here in this picture where the shock absorber is clearly laying horizontally in the middle of the front cross member there. And the purpose of this shock absorber was to help isolate the steering from, well, road shocks. It was just one element of the overall front suspension, and it wasn't necessarily uncommon on vehicles during that time period. But it did, as I mentioned, endow the Tornado with seven shocks, and of course the 1967 to 70 Eldorado as well. These are the most shocks, I believe, that have been used on a General Motors passenger car for all time. So next time you and your friends are talking about the 66 to 70 or 67 to 70 Tornado and Eldorado around the water cooler, you can point out some interesting features that they may not have known about the vehicle. Everybody knows that it's front-wheel drive, but not many people know that it had seven total shocks on the vehicle in all these different locations. But now you know, and that's why you watch this channel. Thanks again for watching this special on an interesting feature of the 1966 to 70 Tornado and 1967 to 70 Eldorado. If you enjoyed this, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you. Thanks again for watching.